Hi, this is George Woodbury from College of Sequoias in Visalia, California, and in this short Flipping the Classroom video, I'm going to go over counting techniques from introductory statistics. Counting techniques are tools that we use to determine how many different outcomes are possible. Here we're looking for whole number answers rather than answers between 0 and 1. The three tools we'll be using are the multiplication principle, permutations, and combinations. Let's begin by looking at the multiplication principle. If a choice consists of two steps, the first of which can be made in m different ways, and the second can be made in n different ways, then the whole choice can be made by multiplying m times n. Uh, for example, Suppose we had a choice of two letters, A or B, followed by a choice of three numbers, 1, 2, or 3. The first choice could be made in two ways, and a tree diagram could start like this. We could choose A first or B first. If we choose A first, we have a choice of three numbers at that point, 1, 2, or 3. If we had chosen B first, we would have the same exact choices. Uh, if we count up the number of branches in this tree diagram, we see that there are six different ways. And we could get this answer of six by multiplying the number of ways we could make the first choice, two, by the number of ways we could make the second choice, three. Let's try a couple of examples. It is rumored that you can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. If Alice's has five different types of coffee and three different types of pie, in how many different ways could you order coffee and a slice of pie? This choice consists of two steps. Selecting a coffee and a slice of pie. We want to determine how many ways we can select the coffee, which was five. The number of different ways we could select the pie, which was 3, and we'll multiply. 5 times 3 means there are 15 different ways you could order a coffee and a slice of pie. Let's try one more. California license plates have one digit. A digit, by the way, is a number from 0 through 9. There are 10 digits in total, followed by three letters. Uh, the letters go from A through Z and there are 26 of those, followed by three digits. How many different license plates are possible? Well, we really have seven steps to this problem. We have one digit, followed by three letters, followed by three digits. We want to fill in each of these spots with the correct number of uh, ways it can be made and then multiply. So first, there are 10 ways to select that first digit, 26 ways to select the first letter, 26 ways to select the second letter. By the way, I should warn you, sometimes it will tell you that the second letter can't be the same as the first. The 26 would drop to 25. Um, the third letter could also be chosen in 26 ways. Another thing I should warn you about, sometimes you're told that the letter can't be O or Q or what have you, and you'll have to reduce this number of 26 as well. Uh, for the last three digits, that's 10, 10, and 10. And so we want to multiply these seven numbers. And uh, using the calculator, that's 456 million. 976,000 license plates. Uh, the next tool we'll be talking about permutations. A permutation is an ordered arrangement of a group of objects. The number of permutations of R objects selected from a set of N objects is given by this formula. So the basic idea here is that we're selecting this many out of that many, like 3 out of 5. Uh, the number that we're selecting is our value of r. The number that we're selecting out of is our value for n. And basically, this will, list, this will tell us how many different ways we could order the three objects out of five. I'm going to show you how to work this formula by hand 
in class, I'll show you how to do it on your calculator. Okay. To identify a permutation problem, the things that we're looking for, selecting r out of n, this many out of that many. We have to be sure that no object can be selected more than once. In other words, once an object is picked, it can't be picked again. And finally, the order of selection is important. In other words, being chosen first is different than being chosen second. Let's try a couple of examples. If there are 30 skaters competing in the, at the Olympics, in how many different ways could the gold, silver, and bronze medals be given? We're starting with 30 skaters and we're selecting one, two, three of them. So we have three out of 30. The first thing that we're looking for for a permutation problem. The second thing we want to make sure that no object can be selected twice. Well, a skater can't earn the gold and the silver. So there's no repetition. And then finally, we want to make sure that the order of selection matters. Uh, earning a gold medal is different than earning a silver medal and that's different than earning a bronze medal. So the order of selection here does matter. So this problem we're looking for 30 P3. By the formula that's going to be 30 factorial which by the way just means the product of all the integers between 30 and 1 divided by 30 minus 3 factorial uh, 30 minus 3 is 27, so I have 30 factorial over 27 factorial. Now your calculator may be able to do these factorials, but we can break it down a little more. 30 factorial is 30 times 29 times 28 all the way through 1. Well, I can end that with 27 factorial, which is all the integers from 27 down through 1, because that matches the denominator, and I can cancel those. Now all I have to do is multiply 30 by 29 by 28, and that works out to be 24,360. Now again in class, I'm going to show you how to enter 30p3 into your calculator. Let's try one more. Uh, school club has 24 members, and how many ways could they elect a president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer? So here, 4 out of 24. A uh, person can't be a president and a vice president, so there's no repetition. And finally, being president is different than being vice president, so the order matters. So this is a permutation problem, 24P4. The numerator is 24 factorial. The denominator, we subtract these two values. 24 minus 4 is 20 factorial. Let's break down the 24 factorial to be 24 times 23 times 22 times 21 times 20 factorial so that it ends with a factorial that matches our denominator. Divide those out and multiply what remains and that is 255,024. That is a lot of ways. Our last tool combinations. A combination is just like a permutation except that the order of selection does not matter. In other words, being picked first or picked second has the exact same result. The number of combinations of R objects selected from a set of N distinct objects is given by this formula. Notice it's pretty much the same formula as we just saw for permutations except it has that extra R factorial in the denominator. The R factorial is there to take care of the problem of the order not mattering. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, 3, 3, 1, 2, these are all the same combination where in permutations they would count separately. R factorial takes care of all the extra orderings of a group of R objects. Let's try a couple of problems. By the way, when we work this by hand, um, We'll break n factorial down to give us the larger of these two factorials in the denominator, and then we'll reduce what we have left. For combinations, we want to look for, again, selecting r out of n, this many out of that many. We want to make sure there's no repetition. 
And finally, this time the order of selection does not matter. So first problem, if a school club wanted to select four of its 24 members to go to a conference, in how many different ways could this be done? Okay. Again, this is four out of 24. There's no repetition because if we're going to end up with four students going to the conference, you can't select the same student more than once. Finally, the order does not matter. And here's the way to determine that. What happens to the first person selected? They go to the conference. How about the second person? They also go to the conference. It's the same result. So that tells us it's combinations. 24C4, the numerator is 24 factorial, the denominator is 4 factorial, times the difference of these two, 20 factorial. I want to break the 24 factorial down so that it ends with the larger factorial in the denominator. 24 times 23 times 22 times 21 times 20 factorial all divided by, I'm going to break down 4 factorial, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, times 20 factorial. Here I want to start reducing this fraction, or I can multiply these four numbers together, multiply these four together, and divide once. Let me just show you the reducing part of this really quickly. 4 goes into 24 six times. 3 goes into 21 seven times. Uh, two goes into 22 11 times. There are other ways you could have reduced this as well. Four times three times two is 24. Uh, when we multiply what remains, we're left with 10,626. Uh, just a quick point. In the last problem, we did 24P4, and that was 255,024. Notice that the number of combinations drops significantly. It actually drops by a factor of 24. All right, last example. 12 students apply for one of three scholarships. In how many ways can the three recipients be selected? Three of 12, check. Because we need three recipients, there's no repetition, check. And then finally, all three students will be earning the scholarship. Since we're told it's, uh, there's no difference between the scholarships, the order does not matter. So we have 12C3. That's going to be 12 factorial over 3 factorial times 9 factorial. Break down the 12 to be 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 factorial. Break down the 3 factorial to be 3 times 2 times 1. Leave the 9 factorial alone, the larger one. Divide those out. Let's see, uh, 3 times 2 is 6. That divides into 12 2 times. Just multiply what's left, and you have 220 different ways. If you have any questions, uh, you can reach me through the contact page on my website, and that is George Woodbury dot com. Good luck.